this protein that forms one of the most essential aspects of what makes our skin very youthful in appearance when we're young, that one can observe, okay, not always, but can observe some visible improvements in skin composition, meaning less wrinkles, even some reversal of wrinkles, less skin sagging, more youthful appearance. You often will find studies that show statistically significant improvements in collagen composition and skin appearance, and even the appearance of reduction in wrinkles and so forth. I spoke to several different dermatologists about this, including one expert in skin cancers specifically. And what I was told is the following. First of all, sun exposure will disrupt the collagen and elastin, but mostly the collagen composition of your skin in a way that makes it appear as if you're aging faster. Okay, so sun exposure, yes, ages the skin. Now that does not mean, however, that you want to avoid all sun exposure because the same dermatologist said that some sun exposure is healthy for us. Why? Because our skin is also an endocrine organ. It's involved in making various hormones. It's part of the vitamin D production pathway. Although a little bit later, we'll talk about the fact that most people get their vitamin D from their diet and in some cases also from supplementation. But it is a good idea to get some sunlight for sake of vitamin D production, but also the production of other hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Okay, so every single dermatologist that I spoke to said that some sun exposure is good for us, but that too much sun exposure will accelerate the appearance of aging in our skin. So let's pin that up on the wall as fact, okay? This again is not saying you should avoid sun completely. It's also not saying you should get excessive sunlight exposure. It's saying sunlight exposure by virtue of the UV wavelength's ability to cause mutations in the epidermal layers of the skin and to impact the collagen composition of the dermal layers below it, as well as some of the other proteins present in the keratinocytes, okay? One of the major skin cell types and other cell types of the skin does lead to the appearance of aged skin, which is one rationale for wearing sunscreen. Now, when I say sunscreen, everyone, including myself, thinks about lotions or in some cases sprays. But let's pay attention to the one fact that I do think everybody, regardless of what category they are in the general population or what background training a dermatologist has, believes, which is a physical barrier, a shirt, a hat, a jacket, a physical barrier can provide, in some cases, very good protection from the sun and I don't think there's any controversy whatsoever as to whether or not the composition of the physical barrier is having negative effects on the skin, okay? You will find those niche communities out there that are saying, okay, certain chemicals present in certain materials that clothing are made with can be problems for the endocrine system, but we're not talking about that here, okay? What I'm saying is that all dermatologists I spoke to, and I think most every rational human being on earth would say that a physical barrier can help to a great degree in order to protect our skin from the sun as it relates to sunburn, but also acceleration of the appearance of aging in our skin. Okay, so I don't think there's any dispute about physical barriers for protecting the skin. As you know, there are various macronutrients present in foods. You can have proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. When we ingest proteins, such as beef, chicken, fish, eggs, as well as some vegan sources of proteins like beans or lentils or tofu or things of that sort, they contain different amounts of different essential amino acids. And those essential amino acids and other amino acids are used as the building blocks for proteins in our muscles, in our tendons, in essentially all the organ systems of our body. The lipids are also used for cell membranes, etc. okay? This has been discussed various times on this podcast before, people like Dr. Lane Norton, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, and others. It's well established that when these proteins are broken down in the gut, some of those amino acids go and serve for the purpose of tissue repair. Others are for the purpose of other things. What most people in the field of nutrition agree upon, and what certainly I believe, is that if you were to say, eat a little bit of liver, right? You might have a little bit of cooked liver or a little bit of skeletal muscle in the form of like a steak, that there's no selective trafficking of the amino acids that are broken down from the liver that you eat to your liver, right? So when you hear that eating liver supports your liver, it may do that by the broad process of certain amino acids and vitamins and lipids, et cetera, serving your liver and other organ and tissue systems of the body, but not selectively your liver. However, when we talk about collagen, this protein that forms one of the most essential aspects of what makes our skin what it is, which is elastic and 
you know, and, and to have some tensile strength where you can push on it, it returns to its uh, original position, especially if it's well hydrated and makes our skin very youthful in appearance when we're young. And then as it degrades when we get old, makes it look less youthful, wrinkles and sagging and so forth. Well, then why would eating collagen protein, which can come from any number of different sources, it can come from fish sources, it can come from, believe it or not, animal hoof sources, it can come from any number of different sources, tendon, etc. Why would ingesting collagen be selectively trafficked to the collagen in our skin, right? That doesn't square with everything we know. And yet, when you look at studies, including meta-analyses of studies where people supplement with collagen powders, and these powders typically come from fish or tendon, any number of different sources. When people do this, and then measures are taken as to skin appearance, skin elasticity, there are a bunch of measures that can be done in humans in the laboratory to do this. You often will find studies that show statistically significant improvements in collagen composition and skin appearance, and even the appearance of reduction in wrinkles and so forth. So this is an interesting exception where the ingestion of a particular protein that naturally exists in abundance in certain tissues, such as skin, but also other tissues like tendon, ligaments, etc., seems to be assisting in either the repair and rejuvenation of collagen or perhaps some other aspect of collagen synthesis that leads to improvements in collagen composition and the appearance of skin in humans. When people supplement with anywhere from five to 15 grams, okay, grams of hydrolyzed collagen per day, in particular in combination with vitamin C, it doesn't have to be a lot of vitamin C, that one can observe, okay, not always, but can observe some visible improvements in skin composition, meaning less wrinkles, even some reversal of wrinkles, less skin sagging, more youthful appearance, more kind of, um, let's just call it uh, rebound elasticity of the skin. I realize that's not the appropriate technical term, but uh, the ability of the skin to bounce back from an indentation when you push down on it, as opposed to saying down or, or sagging. So some pretty impressive results when one considers that what people are basically doing here is just mixing up some hydrolyzed collagen protein and then uh, drinking that down once per day or so. Now that is not to say that you have to supplement with hydrolyzed collagen. Why? Well, collagen is also present in various foods. So for instance, drinking bone broth, beef bone broth, chicken bone broth is a rich source of collagen. You can go online and simply look up just by web search. You can just say, you know, what foods contain high levels of collagen and you'll get a list of things back there. Hopefully a few of those are not just palatable to you, but you actually like, and you can start to include those in your daily diet, or you could supplement with hydrolyzed collagen protein. There are any number of different sources for these. If you drink alcohol and you wake up the next morning, you know your skin's gonna look puffy. It's not going to look good. But many of you can ingest alcohol without issues. I've done an entire episode about alcohol. Yes, it's a poison. Up to two drinks per week for adults who are non-alcoholics is probably safe. Zero is better than any. But let's face it, alcohol is going to exacerbate most skin issues. This is just clear from the literature. Doesn't mean you never have a glass of wine. Doesn't mean you never have a beer or a cocktail if that's your thing. But alcohol consumed in excess and it doesn't take much to get there, is going to cause sleep issues, microbiome issues, so indirectly and negatively impact the skin appearance and health, and indirectly and negatively impact the health of other tissues in your body. But it's clear some of that is reduced to increased inflammation, some is related to decreased sleep quality or duration. So get great sleep, avoid alcohol in excess, maybe avoid it altogether, drink plenty of water. This sounds like such basic advice, but proper hydration is key. Get enough water and electrolytes. It absolutely will impact your inflammation levels by reducing them. It absolutely will impact your skin health and appearance in a positive way. So these are just basic things that I'd be remiss if I didn't mention. The other one is smoking and nicotine from non-smoked sources. So it's very clear that smoking, vaping, dipping, or snuffing is bad for skin appearance and health. Bad, bad, bad. Every dermatologist said this. Why? Well, with smoking, you can imagine why, okay? A lot of carcinogens and uh, toxic end products generated from smoking, even from vaping. Yes, even from vaping, it will make your skin age faster. That's clear. But it's also the substance itself. Why all of those things, in addition to increasing inflammation, nicotine itself is a vasoconstrictor, so you're doing the exact opposite of what you want when it comes to skin health and appearance. And that's why people take things like BPC-157. That's why people take nicotinamide. 
That's why people are trying to improve the hydration status of their skin. So if you're somebody that's vaping nicotine or even taking nicotine in some other form, pouch or smoking nicotine, and you're interested in having youthful appearing skin, you are really shooting yourself in the 